Hi everybody, I'm Evan Meyer, Executive Director at Theodore Payne Foundation. And we are in Los Angeles. It might not look like it because we're surrounded by mountains, there's plants everywhere. This is a part of the city known as the Wildland Urban Interface. And it's where the dense urban environment of Southern California meets the natural wild ecosystems. So here at uh, Theodore Payne Foundation, this is the Verdugo Mountains we're standing in in La Tuna Canyon. We have native coastal sage scrub habitat around us. And then we're hitting up against the San Fernando Valley. Across the valley, you're seeing the Santa Monica Mountains in the background. This area is pretty prevalent here in Southern California and across the Western US. And it's a very unique part of the world and it has some unique challenges. Some of those come from balancing the ecological systems of that landscape with humans, human habitation. And that really becomes important when we talk about wildfire. So if you watched our last video in the series with Director of Horticulture, Tim Becker, he talked about wildfire and how it's part of the ecological system in Southern California. And the landscapes are actually adapted to it. Um, and it's part of the regenerative cycle. It clears out um, overgrown brush and allows annuals to come in. And it's something that happened for thousands, if not millions of years. Uh, it was also part of the indigenous land management practices in pre-European contact times. Landscapes were being carefully stewarded and burnt to promote um, hunting grounds, foraging grounds, wildflower blooms. Wildfire is definitely part of the ecosystem here. The issue that we're seeing today in 2023 is that we have all these homes and structures built into these areas. And so what happens when wildfire sweeps across these urban wild interface areas and there's structures in the way? Well, those structures are going to ignite and there's going to be loss of property and human uh, safety issues. So, so it's a really complex and difficult to sort of navigate we wanted to just kind of highlight a little bit of what we do here at Theodore Payne Foundation and just sort of talk about this tension that you'll see in the wild and urban interface when it comes to human safety, um, protecting biodiversity, protecting ecological systems, uh, and then making sure that you're complying with all the rules and regulations that are intended to help keep people safe. So living in this wild and urban interface, I think it comes with quite a bit of responsibility because you're, you're living in an ecological system. If you, if you go outside, you're going to see wild plants and animals. So the choices you make with your plants in this context are really important. So we're in the Sun Valley neighborhood of Los Angeles. It's the Wildland Urban Interface in the Verdugo Mountains. And we're within a jurisdiction known as the Very High Fire Hazard Severity Zone. Uh, wherever you are, you're going to have different regulations. And they start with your proximity to buildings. So anywhere within 200 feet of a building, you have to follow a certain set of, um, of requirements. And you can see all those demonstrated behind me. One of them is cutting vegetation low. So everything is trimmed to three inches or lower uh, to prevent wildfire from spreading amongst dry vegetation. And that includes native plants and non-native plants. Shrubs and trees are allowed, provided that they're um, at least 18 feet apart and they're pruned up a third from the bottom for shrubs. And with trees, it's six feet off the ground and removing dead wood. This is something that can be done to prevent wildfire from spreading, but it also leaves some of the native vegetation intact. Rather than just clear cutting everything 200 feet around your property, you really recommend to leave these shrubs because that's providing habitat um, for pollinators, for birds, for insects, and it's a way to keep an ecological system going and protect from fire at the same time. This is a complex situation and there's no perfect solution. Obviously from an ecological perspective, the more native vegetation that remains intact, the better it will be for biodiversity. That then comes with the risk of faster spread of wildfire. So, the regulations as they're set now do allow some level of native uh, plants to remain and we highly recommend that you follow that. It's not a perfect solution, but it does retain some connectivity for wildlife, for biodiversity, um, to travel through those spaces. There are ways to do this that are safe, that fit within the existing regulations, that can um, help balance biodiversity in this equation. There are so many parts of California that have this type of wildland urban interface habitat and they all have some degree of risk for wildfire. I think it's really important moving forward that we try to minimize the amount of natural habitat that we're taking away for housing and that housing becomes focused on denser urban spaces and infill because there's not that much of this habitat left. So if you live in the wildland urban interface, enjoy it, connect with the biodiversity that you live within. And one of the ways you can honor the land is by making sure that the plants that have occurred here for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, maintain and all the biodiversity and the ecological interactions 
can remain, and that can be done in the context of protecting your home from wildfire.